Kia is going through somewhat of a transformation right now. They've got a shiny new badge. There's exciting new vehicles like the all-electric EV6, and a couple of old favorites are being completely overhauled, like this, the new fifth generation of the Kia Sportage. Carfection fans amongst you might remember that we ran a previous generation Sportage as our long-termer. And looking at this car, for me, the headline is the looks. See, on the EV6, there was lots of these great new touches that could have just been reserved for the all-electric cars, but here we see that, no, that is actually part of a whole new design language that gets inherited by the rest of the fleet. Up at the front end, you can see a tremendous amount of difference. This new front grille is much sleeker, wider. On the previous generation of Sportage, it kind of looked like a mustache on a car, like from the Pixar movie Cars, but now it feels far more integrated. This Kia badge up front looks so handsome and the light cluster has been moved where before there was this bulbous flowing shape where the light cluster was higher up in this bulbous part here with more creases in the bonnet. Now the bonnet feels like this large expanse of metal and this new modern looking light cluster down here gives the whole car a much more masculine, dare I say, face. The old Sportage wasn't an unattractive car, but this takes a big leap in terms of its design. And there's more of that kind of look at the back, which we'll look at later. But everything from that new badge to the new shape of grille and these new lights come together to make a car that feels way more advanced and modern than the previous generation did from the one before. It's those design touches that have been brought over from the EV6 and continued exterior and interior that make this possibly one of the more attractive C-section SUVs on the market now. The differences on the side are slightly more subtle. If anything, the doors and the side panels are slightly less sculpted than they were on the previous generation. Not unattractive at all, but whereas on the EV6, the side profile is the possibly the most distinctive and attractive side of this car, it's slightly more anonymous on the new Sportage. At the rear three quarters, the biggest difference between the Sportage that we'll get here in Europe and in the rest of the world, where a longer wheelbase version of the car is available. They have an extra window back here and a much longer car. This shorter version, though, to my eye, feels more proportioned and more useful on our kinds of roads. But the side profile looks nice. Not earth shattering, but nice. But for me, the most attractive part of this car is the part that looks the most like the EV6, and that's here at the rear. Because while the side looks conventional and the front looks aggressive and characterful, to me, the rear looks bold. There's something about this large slab of metal across there with this new logo plastered in the middle that just gives it a very imposing look. I have no idea if this kind of style is going to age well, but today, right now, I think it looks brilliant. You realize that Designers were a bit cautious about leaving too much unadorned with creases or folds or badges or anything like that. So to see this one smooth piece of metal here, it draws your eyes into the negative space. It gives the back of the car some presence. It frames the Kia badge, even though it doesn't have the oval around it. There's just something about it. That I really love. It's not over-designed. It's not under-designed. It's elegant while still being impactful. It brings the whole package together. Everything works in harmony and balance. And in a market where there are millions of different SUVs which mostly all look the same, it's important for a car to try and stand out in the small ways it can. Between those touches at the front and these at the back, I genuinely think that Kia has smashed it out of the park with a design on this new Sportage. The new Sportage will be offered in a variety of engines, mild hybrid, full hybrid, or plug-in hybrid, with power ranging from 115 horsepower in the 1.6 liter diesel to 256 horsepower in the 1.6 liter plug-in hybrid version. In that FEV, 180 of those horses will come from the internal combustion engine with the 66.9 kilowatt electric motor filling in the rest. You'll be able to get it in a 7-speed dual-clutch automatic or a 6-speed manual. But the interior wasn't left alone either. It's had some great upgrades. 
And it is here in the interior where the Sportage makes an equally large leap forward in terms of design. However, it's not just aesthetics as it is on the outside, it's actually practical as well. The instrument cluster has now been replaced by these 12.3 inch screens, two of them strapped together to also include the infotainment screen, all encased in this single unit, exactly the same as we saw on the Kia EV6. It immediately gives the car a far more modern and contemporary feel than the previous generation. There's a new terrain mode available for when things get a little off-road and a full suite of driver assistance systems are available, such as blind spot monitoring that puts a camera feed in the instrument cluster, remote smart parking and navigation-based smart cruise control, to name but a few. It also has this unique little bar here that the EV6 had, which allows you to toggle between uh, nav and media controls and at a push of a button, what looks like actually backlit physical switches actually reveals it's a digital screen and switches to HVAC controls. This gives you the benefit of having twice as many controls within the same limited amount of space. The benefit is that you can still have, if you want, a physical volume dial for your music. You do, however, have to make sure you're not on HVAC so you don't accidentally increase the temperature instead of the volume. This center unit here is dominated by this rotary gear selector dial, again the same one we saw on the Kia EV6. And for those people who don't really like selecting gears like that, it won't appeal, but it has this plastic knurling around the edge and while not being completely up to say Bentley standard of finish, it does give a nice tactile feel to it. It's encased in this very shiny plastic housing, which does feel like it's going to be a huge attractor of fingerprints. And there's slightly more blank areas than I'd like to see, but the controls are right at hand for things like drive mode selection and heated and cooled seats and the steering wheel heating. It's all very nice. I'm also quite enamored with the cup holders in this car. And it's nice when a manufacturer actually allows us to be surprised by something as mundane as a cup holder. This center area feels like it's one big open space for you to just chuck keys and wallets and whatnot. But at the press of a button, a very quick release little cup holder pops out that gives you room to just slot your cup in. I imagine it's also a great way to launch small items out of this hole, but that's just an adventure you get to go on in the new Sportage. It feels a far more contemporary place to be, this new Sportage, and I'm looking forward to taking it out for a drive to see what living with the car actually feels like. The seats have a nice sporty feel to them. They feel like they'd be quite comfortable on long drives, and I love the integrated coat hangers on the back of the front seats here. It's not as big as, say, the Sorento, so you don't quite have as much space on the back seats as you would in that larger car, but for a car of this footprint, it should be plenty of space to get comfortable. There's also a sizable boot, and we don't have the exact numbers on what the full capacity litre-wise of that is, but it looks cavernous enough to me. All in all then, this new car, while making modest step forwards under the hood, at least keeps it up to date, but it's the aesthetics exterior and interior with these new little added functions around that allowed the Sportage to once again keep up with modern times. Right from the first generation back in the early 90s right the way through to now, it's evolved from the utilitarian SUV it was before to now very much an urban cruiser for families. It is a very attractive car and I can't wait to take it out for a spin. Thank you so much for watching. What do you think of the new Kia Sportage? Let us know in the comments below. Please consider hitting the subscribe button. We're so close to 1 million subscribers and it would be great if you could help us get to that milestone.